This is the CDH tier list leaderboard. This is basically uh, from the top to the right bottom, the highest commander win rate to the lowest commander win rate. It actually keeps going uh, further. This is just 60. It keeps going to like zero eventually. But we don't need to have like every single thing in here on this entire list because that will just be too long. And I'm happy to announce that Cisse Weatherlight Captain is actually currently sitting on the best win rate in the entire game at 27.03 with Narset Enlightened Master just under it with 26.80. But then you have Krom Ludwigs and Tymna on 26.79. So Narset and Krom is like on equal. And if I'm gonna be completely honest, like the top five commanders, you have Cisse, you have Narset, you have Krom and Tymna, you have Silias uh, Rogsai, they are pretty much equal. Then you have Kenrif. Now between Cisse and Kenrif, Kenrif currently sitting on 24.71 and Cisse on 27.03, the difference isn't that huge. But the difference starts to get bigger once you go lower. For example, just here you have Atraxa sitting on 21, okay, let's actually say 22%, basically, 21.97. So the difference between Cisse and Atraxa is like 5%, so that's a bigger difference. So in truth, if you're asking about what are the best commanders in the format, we're gonna look at all of these top 10 like a collective. They're kind of equally good in my opinion. So even though CC currently holds the top, I think it's going to be overtaken by Tim and Krom eventually and things are gonna go up and down. It's What you could take away from this is that you have some recommended choices and then you have some not so recommended choices. Now what I mean by that is this, look at Rowan Sign of War, average win rate 15.38, the lowest, the absolute on the rock bottom currently in this situation, in this paper. This is her, Rowana Sign of War, 32 uh, win, she's actually been increasing, that plus 6% is how much is increased during this year, so maybe she will climb up, but currently she's still sitting on something you would, I would honestly uh, word like, not so recommended. Something to be, might work in tournaments, but might not be the best. So if we move through the top 10, the best 10, or the, the 10 with the highest win rate, we have Najela at 23.84 from 631 different tournament entries. That's a pretty good job, actually. She has been dropping in power level a tiny bit, and in my opinion, she has started to kind of struggle in the current meta. Ogreshi Bowmaster has been doing some good job against her, and other decks are just able to basically have a better Kadra engine in the command zone and a better turbo potential than her. So there's a huge chance that her win rate could continuously decrease over time, potentially. The next number nine is Tropical Malcolm, Malcolm and Tana, Temur Malcolm with Glinthorn Bakunir. This is a very good example of how you're getting a efficient win con together with Malcolm and Clinton Buccaneer, because adding Tana, you get access to green and red, green for tutors to find your creature, and then you can win. This also enables some breach lines as well still. So from 127 tournament entries, we have an average win rate of 23.90, basically 24% average win rate, which is quite good. Then we have Tumna Jeska Mardu, where you can win with infinite mana, but still have access to Tumna, with some Kadra Tumna efficiency. This is opening up some breach combos, some Adnos potentials and such. You have 132 tournament entries and an average win rate performance so far of 24.21. And Delny is also helping this commander out a tiny bit. Orcish Bowmaster have been a good upgrade for this commander pair. You have some very good combo options with Cloudstone Kuryu and Dockside Extortionist and variants to that. The next one is a monocolored commander, and obviously this commander has been growing in power level over time. You can see that plus 0.66, that's how much win rate it has increased during the start of from this year. Magda Brazen Outlaw is sitting on a current 24.36 
average win rate from 199 tournament entries. The commander is doing great. Now, this is a very good example of a commander that is giving you the option of both being a turbo combo potential, because you just need to have 10 treasures and you can win in instant speed with Magda, and you are using Magda to usually fuel towards that game plan regardless. And you're seeing a lot of upgrades in various different dragons and artifacts, but also artifacts that are in the changeling variant of being a dwarf. As long as Magda has an artifact dwarf, she's golden. So this is a command that is seeing a lot of upgrade, has a lot of really good game plan mechanics going into the current metagame of both being able to value engine and being able to turbo off fast, but also in instant speed. Remember, she can win in instant speed once she has 10 treasures or more. I'm honestly really happy to see that Magda is climbing upwards in the CDH tier list leaderboard. This is something people really wouldn't understand and see. This is something people would often overlook and that's also a big contributor to her win rate. But people are often viewing this as a mediocre commander. The next one is also a toolbox turbo variant. Rocco. This is a Naya. You basically wanna, she, I think it's seven mana Rocco. X equals four to find that uh, Academy Rector or Arena Rector, I think it is. And then basically combo off and win. So from 207 tournament entries, you have an average win rate of 24.65. And that is quite good. It's very close to the 25% mark. Similar to Magda, you are also a kind of turbo orientated commander with some toolbox potential. You can basically sit here and find specific creatures that you need for the specific situation. As creatures are getting an upgrade, basically being power creeped a little bit more over time, Rocco is also seeing a few upgrades over time as well as there being developments for this commander. The current iteration, I think, is very focused on Turbo, have decreased the stacks package a lot, and are just focused on being a fast combo deck, more or less. Then we have Kenrif, the Return King, who has actually dropped quite a lot, but he's still retaining a very high win rate. Now, he's quite expensive, and I think that's the big reason why he has been dropping. And a lot of other, you're going to see them soon, five-color commanders, have basically starting to take his position. But it is kind of interesting that he's stronger than Nayela currently. So he's currently sitting on a 24.71 average win rate that has dropped by 1.44 from a total of 325 tournament entries. He's a very open commander, can be built in a lot of different ways, so he can always adapt to whatever metagame that he's required to fight against. This means that ultimately he will always be relevant. No matter what happens to the metagame, he will still be in it. For example, Nayela could currently be in struggling because of the Orcish Bowmaster. We saw that Nayela's win rate was quite low compared to Kenriff, but Kenriff can still play around that Orcish Bowmaster being a little bit more adaptive. He doesn't suffer from that Orcish Bowmaster the same way that Nayela does. This actually brings up a very good discussion. Let's just jump over and look at Kinnan. Kinnan is sitting on a 22.21 average win rate that has been kind of staying around the same total from the start. It's been dropping by 0.26%, but we have a 1,029 tournament entries. I know that a lot of people are praising Kinnan for being great, saying that he is awesome, putting him quite high on their recommended list, while I'm putting him quite low. It's not me that is saying this, I was surprised at this fact as well, I viewed Kinnan to be among the top. But according to like tournament performance and such, he's not doing great. And maybe the speculation could be that Orcish Bowmaster is uh, putting a dent into his uh, basic game plan. Similar to how we could speculate that Nayela is potentially suffering from the Orcish Bowmaster as well. I thought I would showcase Kinnan just because there are so many people recommending Kinnan in general. And I wanted to bring this to the discussion table and the perspective, because it's something to very much consider. 
Then we have the Grixis Rogsai, Celius and Rograk. With a 450 tournament entries, an average win rate of 25.91, basically 26 average win rate. As you can see, it has been dropping by uh, minus 30, which means that it uh, started at this year above 26 average win rate. This deck is not going anywhere. This is a strong, solid deck that really performs, really wins. It turbos fast. It has a very fast, efficient game plan. It is a something of the boogeyman of the format, I have to say. With the printing of the Wandering, this deck can even be uh, quite grindy. Now, the commanders aren't really grindy options. They're just fast turbo options together with Silas for color identity. But you can tutor for, and I often see this, people tutoring for Rustic Study or Mystic Remora or mulliganing towards those things to make sure that they have a great grindy game. And then you also add the Wandering into that perspective and if you have your Wandering in your open hand, a turn 1 or turn 2 Wandering, you have a really good game going forward. So a lot of people are saying like, yeah, this is just turbo, it's all in, it doesn't have a grindy potential, but the cards inside the 99 is just opening up that potential for you. This is also not a commander that is suffering from the Orcish Bowmaster, nor is it really suffering from the Draenite Magistrate as it can play around it. You can play Adnos into Fasa's Consult and now the Draenite Magistrate doesn't do anything. Or you can just sit there with your one ring and draw cards until you can like remove the Draenite Magistrate and combo off afterwards. One thing that is very important to mention inside this format is that you need to have the win push button. You need to be able to push the button and say I'm attempting to win. And this deck is very capable of doing that. Because there are all of these small timing windows where suddenly if I can win now, the window is open, my opponents won't be able to do it, but in the next turn cycle that window will close. And Rogue's Eye is a command that is definitely capable of of always having that window or having the option to always push the button. Then the skill comes to being able to understand if it's time to push the button or grind more value. That takes us to the last three. We've already mentioned Tim and Chrome, and I have to say that I think this is potentially one of the best or maybe actually the best. I've said this already in other videos that this is the best and I will stay to that statement. We have 1510 tournament entries. This is the most popular commander inside the entire format. M more popular than Kinnan, but still a higher win rate than Kinnan. We're sitting on a 26.79. You can see that it's been dropping by 0 0.65 since the start of this year, but still it is staying strong and it's not going to change at all. Now let's actually take a pause, but we're gonna be back to these commanders pretty soon and look at Narset and Light and Master that is actually higher than Tumnacrom currently. I would not rank this as better because the total tournament entries is 43. Now still from those 43, this commander has been performing quite well. But it's when you're gathering that really huge sample size that you can really trust the data. Now the G-square test is still significant, but we have so much more trustworthiness, you could say, towards Timnacrom. And in general, things are going up and down. So I think that this is a commander that is still, I would say, potentially weaker than Timnacrom. It's still good. And by the way, in like 2015, or 14, 13, this was the best CD8 commander inside the entire format. Like this answer was the best commander. It was like the only good. Like Sur and Narset were the two best commanders in the format. Truly. So it's really cool that it's like sticking around. It's been struggling quite a lot uh, recently during the TNT era, but it's uh, making a comeback with that capability of basically just cast from command zone attack and win the game if you're lucky. There's a lot of things that this commander is struggling against. Orcish Bowmaster is not one of them because this thing has hexproof. Draenite is definitely annoying. But besides Draenite, you're kind of fine. Uh, rule of law effects are annoying too, but people have been uh, playing those less and less. So is this a good commander? Yeah, definitely. It's showing potential. We're gonna have to see if it sticks around and it keeps this win rate in general. 
So going back to Team Nacrom with 1510 tournament entries, like this is true and true tested. So if you're picking up this commander, so many people have already tried it, they have brought it to tournaments, and they have performed good in general. So the chance of this doing the same like result for you is quite secured. Like this is a very recommended commander pair or a commander deck in general. And you have so many different things to do with this. It's very adaptive as it's not commander centric. So you don't care if your opponent has an Orcish Bowmaster, you can play the game still. You don't care if your opponents have a Dryanath Magistrate, you can play the game still. You have a very efficient, fast turbo potentials with Undual Breach, Adnos, Brain Freeze. People have been starting to play mid range variations of this commander pair as well, adding Talion, adding other mid range. Like I've seen some people play Consecrated Sphinx in this as well and cut Adnos from the deck list and such as well. And it's just working out. Like the data and the performance and the enormous sample size is just speaking for itself. This is a commander that is truly working out and having a very good impact. I would have to say that I truly think that this might be the best commander inside the entire format. Which takes us to the top dog, Cissé Weatherlight Captain. With a 635 tournament entries, she's really starting to co uh, collect a really high sample size and an average win rate of 27.03. She has definitely started to increase the amount of players playing this commander, but she's keeping that very good performance in general. I've said several times on this YouTube channel that I think that CC Vedala Captain is going to be the best commander in the format eventually, and for those who knows, this is my favorite commander in the entire format. This is the commander I play the most, and I have to say I love it. It's a very fun commander, it feels really strong, but I want to emphasize that I don't think that this is better than Tumnacrom. I think it's starting to climb up towards Tumnacrom, and I think in the future it's going to overtake it. Like it's currently have a higher win rate than Tumnacrom, which is kind of why I made this video, so I can kind of celebrate. This is a celebration video for me, kind of in the end, and why I really wanted to make this video, that she's just overtaken Tumnacrom by like 0.5%, which is nothing. But over time, I think she's going to climb above Tumnacrom. That's my personal speculation, I could be wrong. We will see what the data suggests in the future. I think this is going to see a lot of more pickups. I think more people are going to tune into Cissé and play more Cissé, and eventually we will see where the uh, win rate kind of lands. I think it's going to stay strong as this commander has so much different potentials. You can tweak it so much and you can adapt it to a away from the typical CSA plan. We have started to see people adding Undual Breach, Adnos, and I have started to speculate around Necropotence for CSA as well. And that means that you're opening up to play against and being adaptive, not suffering from the Orcish Bowmaster, the Draenite, or the Opposition Agent. Something I often hear from people that how can you play CSA when Opposition Agent is just killing it so much, or when Orcish Bowmaster is just killing it so much. You have solutions to them with good proper deck building and just having an idea of what's going to happen if you run into those situations, you can adapt your deck to be able to solve those uh, annoying situations. And CZ has been getting a lot of upgrades over time and she's going to keep getting upgrades over time as legendary creatures are something Wizards of the Coast are going to print a lot more of. And that's my big argument why I think Cissé is going to eventually power over and become the best commander inside the format. Because Kinnan, Lofo, Talion have been who Esika, yeah, Emil, all of those have been huge upgrades for CC in general. And I think we're going to see more like Kinnan point two, Talion point two, and such that is going to push Cissé's win rate even further. Basically being the, the one ring that binds them all. <laughs> there are many legendaries, but there's one legendary to rule them all. I love that. Now you might think that this is the end of this video. We basically looked at the top 10 and looked at Kinnan and such. And by the way, you can look around here and see your potential commander. This is the top 30 
So if your commander is not up here, it might be like lower in the win rate. But there's one more thing we need to mention. On this list, I don't have commanders that have that result. She square test result is not statistically significant. This is Lucas and Will that is showcasing a very strong potential. Look at this, you have 62 decks and they have an average win rate of 30.85. In other words, they have better win rate than CC and Timna Chrome, but they have a very low sample size, like 62 is very small, and the win rates, how the entries have been, have been quite random. So the G-square test is seeing this as not significant, st statistically significant, which means we can't truly trust that win rate, which means I can't put it up there on my list as we don't know the true answer. But over time, as more people are starting to play this, and it has actually been starting to see more and more action, we're going to eventually get a secured result. I don't think that this commander pair is going to keep a 30% average win rate. I think it's going to drop down to something around the Tumna Chrome variant. Maybe more, maybe less, but something around that value. But I truly think that this is a good recommended commander. I like, I would like to recommend this, even though the data uh, can't truly say that it's trustworthy, but it's showcasing a very good promise. But I would also like to highlight inside this video some commanders that I don't think is recommended. So here you have Talion, the Kindly Lord, sitting on 17.75 from 237 tournament entries. He was actually on the list, the, the long list of 30, 60 different tournaments, uh, commanders I mean, and it was quite a low on that. And I don't think this is a, like a good commander choice. It's not adapted towards the current meta, I would say. This commander is playing a very controller game, a very grinder game, but it, it's, it's lacking that combo potential basically. And that's why I think it's struggling. Now, when I see this inside the 99s, the win rate is usually going up because it's a good card inside the 99. Like this is great inside Cisse. It's great. Uh, it's showcasing very good results inside Team 9 Chrome. So you just need to separate it away from the commander and the 99. A good card, not good commander. Ursa have always been kind of not so recommended. He was not on the list because he was even lower than the top 60 commanders. Like I have a limit to how many names can go onto a piece of paper. But yeah, Ursa is not that great. Never been good or kind of been good back in like early, early, super early stages, but then he fell off. Venota is not recommended from 296 tournament entries, that's quite a lot. She's sitting on a 16.19 average win rate. That is not great. She's struggling, that's a very good word for her. Yuriko Tiger Shadow, 19.88 average win rate from 349 tournament entries. So in this video, we've been looking at the top 10 uh, commanders, basically. I don't think you should view them as the top 10. I would basically say that these 10 are kind of equal. The difference between the number one and the number 10 isn't that huge. So I would have to say that in the end, they are kind of equally good. And like a few percentage uh, differences doesn't make a huge impact. It is when you're starting to see a difference that's up to like 5%. That's when things are starting to say like, yeah, that's a big difference. These two are definitely far apart. So there should be a difference between, let's say, Cisse and Kinan. But we also looked at some uh, potential, like commanders that could like be very good, but just need more action. And some very popular commanders that aren't great and I have to say aren't that recommended anymore. Yuriko, Venota, Talion, Kinnan are very popular commanders but they're just not pushing that potential as people are claiming them to be. Hope you enjoyed this very short update of the CDH tier list leaderboard. I will try to do this every three months or so when the, the tier list basically have been updated and more tournament entries have been made so we can see and get more clear results over time as more smaller commanders are going to get more sample size we're going to be able to add them to the leaderboard as well. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoy the video. Take care guys and I'll see you in the next one.